Football is a violent sport, which is what makes evaluating players still in high school so difficult. With how prevalent injuries are at all levels, it's tough to predict who will actually make it to the NFL. That's what makes things like the USA Today All-USA high school football team so intriguing. These young men were among the best of the best, but many of them never found NFL greatness. Today, we're taking a look back at the 1990 USA Today All-USA team and seeing what happened to all 24 players, starting with the offense. Marquette Smith, running back. Smith played his high school football at Lake Howell in Winter Park, the school that would later produce star NFL receiver Brandon Marshall and NBA player Chandler Parsons. Smith was widely regarded as the top offensive player in the country, winning player of the year from Gatorade and USA Today. He decided to attend Florida State over several other powerhouse offers. After putting up nearly 7,000 yards and 88 touchdowns in high school, expectations were high. Sadly, Smith was never able to live up to those lofty expectations, totaling 403 yards and six touchdowns during his three years with the Knolls. He didn't play during his sophomore season, taking a red shirt, and by the next year, he'd been passed by guys like Warwick Dunn on the depth chart as FSU won a title. Smith decided to transfer to Central Florida, where he recaptured some of the ability that made him such a highly sought-after recruit. Over two years, he rushed for 2,569 yards, putting him fifth all-time on UCF's career rushing leaders. Keep in mind that the other players in the top 10 all played at least three seasons. The Panthers selected Smith in the fifth round of the 96 draft. While he never saw the field, he played for two seasons as a backup before spending one last season with the Shreveport Knights in the Regional Football League. Smith earned his MBA from UCF and has been using that degree to run his own private investigation company based in Florida after several years of doing the same work under other companies. Eric Zier, Quarterback Zaire was born in Florida, but started his football career in Germany, playing for the local American high school while his father was working for the Army. He led his team to a title as a sophomore and excelled at basketball and baseball as well, so the family decided to move back to the States and Zaire went to school in Marietta, Georgia. He decided to keep it local and attend the University of Georgia for college ball. Zaire actually graduated high school early to join the Bulldogs for spring practice, one of the first notable players to do so. As a true freshman, Zaire made his debut against a favored Clemson team. He threw for 249 yards, two TDs, and no interceptions to upset the Tigers. He played well through his four-year career, totaling 11,153 yards, 67 touchdowns, and only 37 INTs over his four years. Zaire's final two seasons put him into Heisman contention, finishing in 10th place for voting as a junior and 7th as a senior. When he left Georgia, he held 67 school records and 18 SEC records, including the SEC's all-time passing yards record. Peyton Manning and several others later broke that record, but Zaire is still in 7th as of 2024. In 95, Zaire was selected by the Browns in the third round of the draft. He spent six years in the NFL, largely as a backup, playing for Cleveland, Baltimore, and Tampa. Tampa Bay. Over his career, Zaire totaled 3,520 yards, 16 TDs, and 15 interceptions. After retiring in 2000, Zaire spent some time working as a broadcaster for UGA while also working in mortgage sales. Napoleon Kaufman, running back. Kaufman was born in Missouri, but spent most of his life in California. Get this, as a high school junior, he rushed for 2,954 all-purpose yards and 39 TDs while averaging 70 yards per kick return. Ludicrous. Kaufman ran for 1,960 yards and 34 touchdowns as a senior and took his 4-3 speed to the University of Washington. As a true freshman in 91, Kaufman was mostly used on returns for a team that won a national title. Granted, he still had 307 yards and four touchdowns, but that was only a taste of what was to come. Kaufman put up more than 1,000 yards in each of his next three seasons, culminating with 1,390 yards and nine TDs during his senior season. That year, he was named the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year, made the second-team All-American roster, and finished ninth in Heisman voting. Washington also snapped Miami's 58-game home winning streak that year, giving Kaufman and the Huskies plenty of bragging rights. Kaufman was the all-time leading rusher for Washington for 23 years until Miles Gaskin finally passed him. He was still the leader in all-purpose yards as of 2022. While Kaufman is only 5'8", his mix of blinding speed and strength in the weight room enticed the Raiders enough to select him with the 18th pick in the 95 draft. He spent his entire six-year career in Oakland, rushing for 4,792 yards and 12 TDs. 
Kaufman was the team's primary back in 97 and 98 and produced well, but started splitting time with Tyrone Wheatley in 99. During his time with the team, he also worked as the Raiders chaplain and baptized several teammates. In 2000, he decided to leave the NFL behind and start working as a Christian minister. He opened a church in 2003 and is still working there as of 2024. He's also spent time working as a high school football coach in California, taking a job at Dublin High School in 2024 as the head varsity coach. Stephen Pitts, running back. Pitts attended Penn State for college ball. He was never the lead back. That largely goes to Kajana Carter during Pitts' playing days but he was consistently in the mix. Over his four years, Pitts ran for 1,156 yards and five touchdowns. He also showed off versatility as a returner during his senior season, averaging 21 points over 17 returns. The 49ers selected Pitts in the sixth round of the 96 draft. He never saw action, but did stick on with a few rosters until retiring midway through the 97 season. During his NFL career, Pitts had been dealing with an unknown medical issue that was causing him to lose weight. After retiring, he learned that it was Graves' disease, a progressed form of hyperthroidism. Fortunately, he was able to get a few procedures done, and he was inspired by the work of his doctors to enter the medical field for his second career. As of 2024, he's working in medical sales. His daughter plays field hockey at Yale, and his son is looking to play lacrosse at the college level after wrapping up his high school career. Scott Stratton, Offensive Line. In high school, Stratton was regarded as the second best offensive line prospect. He followed Pitts to Penn State. However, a 95 article from Penn State's student newspaper says that he was no longer on the team by that point due to, quote, off the field problems. I've searched in the usual places and haven't found anything detailing what happened, so if you know, please share it below. Sadly, Stratton passed away in 2024. John Horn, Offensive Line The 6'6 Horn made the list as an offensive lineman, but he started his career at Illinois on the defensive side of the ball. He took a redshirt season as a freshman and stuck with the defense during his redshirt freshman season. The next year, he added about 40 pounds and switched to offensive line. Horn would play out his redshirt junior season. Horn picked up a major arm injury and eventually called it quits. Since finishing his college years, Horn has led a relatively normal life, taking care of his daughters and working on his art. Pat Kessie, Offensive Line First of all, apologies if I've mispronounced that last name. I was unable to find a source with the correct pronunciation. Kessie played his high school ball for Farrington and Honolulu. Like Kaufman, Kessie headed to Washington to play college ball. The 6'3 lineman was known as Cavs during his time there because of his ridiculously large calf muscles. He started every game as a junior and senior, helping pave the way for Kaufman. Kessie went undrafted in 96, but the Raiders picked him up for their practice squad. He then played special teams for the Packers and Eagles in 97 before jumping to the Canadian League in 99. Kessie was also drafted by the Las Vegas Outlaws in the first XFL draft. Since then, Kessie has been living in Las Vegas, working as a coach in youth camps and training clinics. Scott Joslin, Offensive Line Joslin was a star lineman in Orlando and decided to attend Florida for college ball. He planned to be an early starter, but was forced to take a redshirt year after dealing with back issues that the team's staff attributed to his weight. The 6'3", 305-pounder never got into the shape the team was asking for, and head coach Steve Spurrier removed him from the roster in 1992. That 91 class for Florida was up and down like that, with several big recruits flaming out, and many others, especially on defense turning into All-Americans. Unfortunately, you can't win them all, and Jocelyn has largely disappeared from the public eye. Robert Loya, Offensive Line Loya played his college ball at USC. The highly touted lineman played all four years with the Trojans, but didn't live up to the hype in terms of being a guy who could play at the next level. Instead, Loya would start to work in transportation in 96, where he's been working ever since. As of 2024, he'd gone back to school to earn his MBA and is working as the chief operating officer for a California-based trucking company. Mike Miller, wide receiver. During his time with Notre Dame, Miller became known as a dynamic return man. While he only brought back one punt for a score, he averaged about 22 yards per kick return over his career. As a receiver, Miller pulled in 48 catches for 872 yards and five touchdowns over three years. In 94, things took a turn for Miller as he was indicted on check fraud charges in his home state of Texas. Miller was dismissed from Notre Dame, but eventually cleared of all charges. Instead of going back to school, which would have been tough, Miller went to the NFL Combine. 
he was selected in the fifth round of the 93 draft by the Browns. Things took another turn during the Browns rookie minicamp. Miller decided to take the guaranteed money from his contract and just leave town. Of course, the Browns cut up to him and got their money back. After that episode, Miller never signed with another NFL team and has faded into obscurity in the years since. Philip Riley, wide receiver. Riley joined Marquette Smith at Florida State. The do-everything speedster played all over the field for the Knolls, totaling 433 receiving yards, 84 rushing yards, 213 kick return yards, and five total touchdowns during his three-year career. He also ran track for Florida State, winning the 1995 NCAA Indoor Championship in the 55-meter hurdles. Riley was selected in the sixth round of the 96 draft by the Eagles. He played in one game for the Jets later that season, accumulating no stats. Riley would sign with the Bills, Bears, and Dolphins over the next year and change for leaving the game in 97. The four-time All-American in track was inducted into the Florida State Hall of Fame earlier this year. David Diarmas, kicker. Diarmas' brother Dan kicked and punted for four years at Maryland, so David followed in his footsteps to become a Terp. However, during his freshman season, he decided to quit the team after saying he'd endured too much abuse from fans after kicking 28 of 39 extra points, 10 of 17 field goals, and averaging 34 yards on 55 punts. He transferred to Connecticut and became an all-Yankee conference player while handling all kicking duties. Diarmas tried out with the Rams and Bucks, but never made an NFL roster. He did play and coach in the Arena League before starting work as a government contractor. In 2020, he started working as an athletic director at a private school in Virginia. As of 2024, he's still there, working as a principal and on the football team's coaching staff. And now for the defense. Derek Brooks, linebacker. The USA Today Defensive Player of the Year joined Riley and Smith at Florida State. After playing safety as a freshman, Brooks established himself as one of the premier linebackers in the nation. Brooks made three straight All-ACC teams and was a first-team All-American as a junior and senior. In 93, his junior season, he was named the ACC Defensive Player of the Year as FSU won a national title. In 94, he was named the co-winner of the Jack Lambert Trophy alongside Dana Howard as one of the top linebackers in the country. Brooks finished his college career with 274 tackles, 5 picks, 8.5 sacks, 13 passes defended, 4 forced fumbles, and 3 fumble recoveries. The Bucks selected him with the 28th pick of the 95 draft. Brooks spent his entire career in Tampa Bay, starting all but three games during his 14-year NFL career. He is widely considered one of the best players in franchise history after making 11 Pro Bowls and 9 All-Pro teams. He also won a Super Bowl and the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2002. Brooks led the league in tackles three times and as of 2024 sits in seventh place on the all-time total tackles list with 1,713. He also racked up 13.5 sacks, 24 forced fumbles, 84 pass deflections, 25 interceptions, and 7 defensive touchdowns. Brooks was released by the Bucks in 2009 as the team was looking to get younger. He spent the entire season as a free agent before retiring in 2010. In 2014, Brooks was elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. Brooks spent some time in broadcasting before joining the parent organization of the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2019. During his time with the organization, the Lightning has won two Stanley Cup titles. Trent Zinkowitz, Defensive Line The big defensive lineman was one of two USA Today defensive players to join the Michigan Wolverines for college ball. Across his four-year career, he racked up 106 total tackles, 29 tackles for loss, 11 sacks, and one fumble recovery. He did go to the draft combine after his college career was over, but doesn't appear to have latched on with the team for any significant time. Instead, he started working a few regular jobs and got big into boating. As of 2024, he's opened up his own boat company down in Florida. Pat Riley, defensive line. Big things were expected of the six foot six Riley at Miami. Unfortunately, the young Hurricane picked up a shoulder injury as a sophomore, missing the entire season. As a junior, he reportedly showed up to training camp out of shape. By the time he'd gotten into shape, fellow lineman Warren Sapp had become a star for the Canes, so Riley played, but it was far from the breakout campaign many had expected. Most of his senior season was also taken away by a torn ACL, but Riley was still selected in 
in the second round of the 95 draft by the Bears. He played in one game with Chicago and spent 96 with the Falcons and Seahawks, never seeing game time. Riley's brother Michael played at Tulane in the late 80s, and the Jets selected him in the sixth round of the 91 draft. Pat's son Patrick played college football at Nichols State. Greg Wilkins, defensive line. Wilkins left Chicago to play for the Oklahoma Sooners. He was solid to start his career, winning Big 8 Freshman of the Year in 91 as a defensive end. However, he and coach Gary Gibbs were often at odds, and Wilkins decided to leave OU and play at Langston. He switched the offensive line with the Lions, but left school in 95 after having a son. While he was only 12 credits away from earning his degree, his son took priority, and Wilkins spent four years largely out of football. That said, he did have several tryouts over the years and eventually got into the Cowboys training camp in 99. While he didn't make the team, he impressed enough to earn a contract with the Berlin Thunder in NFL Europe. He played there for a season before leaving the game behind and taking care of his family. Jason Lehman, Defensive Line Lehman made this team as a defensive lineman, but transitioned to the offensive line during his time at Tennessee. After the switch, Lehman started 39 games straight for the Vols, blocking for Heath Schuler and Peyton Manning. He made two All-SEC teams and was named a second-team All-American in 95. The Oilers selected him in the second round of the 96 draft, and Lehman played there for four seasons, joining the team when it moved to Tennessee. In 98, he started nearly every game, but was a depth option for the most part, including when the team made it to the Super Bowl in 99. After that season, Lehman was out of the NFL and has spent the last few decades working for Tennessee State Bank. The only notable post-playing update I could find says that he broke all four bones in his leg and his collarbone in a 2007 ATV accident, but thankfully he recovered and is back at the bank as of 2016. Sam Adams, Defensive Line Adams wasn't just a standout defensive lineman during his high school years. He was also a state champion in the shot put, placing second in the nation at his best. He went on to attend Texas A&M for college ball, winning SWC Newcomer of the Year as a freshman in 91. He went on to make two straight first team all SWC teams in 92 and 93, while making the 93 All-American roster. That season, he was also named Sports Illustrated's National Defensive Player of the Year and finished as a runner-up for the Lombardi Award. Adams decided to forego his final season of eligibility, and the Seahawks picked him with the eighth pick in the 94 draft. He only started seven games at defensive end as a rookie, but picked up four sacks and made the all-rookie team. The next year, he converted to defensive tackle, where he'd stick for the rest of his career. Adams played in Seattle for six seasons, making the Pro Bowl as an alternate in 97. In 2000, he signed with Baltimore as a free agent. There, he was part of one of the most dominant defenses in NFL history. Alongside Ray Lewis, Rod Woodson, and several other stars, Adams and the Ravens won a Super Bowl that year. Adams also made back-to-back -back Pro Bowl and All-Pro rosters in 2000 and 2001. After those two seasons, he signed with Oakland, making another Super Bowl, but this time losing to Derek Brooks's Bucks. He then signed with the Bills for three seasons, making the Pro Bowl once again in 2004. Adams finished out his career with a season in Cincinnati and another in Denver before retiring after the 2007 season. Since hanging him up, Adams has partnered to own teams in the Arena League and Indoor League. He's also been working as a coach at the high school level, coaching Roosevelt High in Washington. His daughter played college basketball at San Diego State and Oregon State. As of 2024, she's playing pro ball in the United Kingdom. His son Taron played cornerback at Arizona State and Utah State. His younger son, Sam Adams II, is playing running back at Washington in 2024. Huntley Backich, linebacker. Again, apologies for mispronunciation, I couldn't find a good source. Backich joined Mike Miller at Notre Dame. The 6'3 linebacker played for three seasons with the Fighting Irish, but endured injuries to both his Achilles tendon and back that ended up being so bad that doctors told him to give up football ahead of his senior season. Backich followed the doctor's advice and finished out his collegiate career off the gridiron. In the decades since, he's moved back to Dallas and worked as an executive in the IT and telecommunications industry. His son Boomer played college football at Army, though it doesn't look like he got further than the scout team. 
Jameer Miller, linebacker. Miller was born in Philly, but moved to El Cerrito in California by the time he was playing high school ball. He kept it local and attended UCLA for college ball. He played three years for the Bruins, making the All-American team in 93. After producing 35 tackles for loss and 23.5 sacks, Miller decided to head to the 94 draft. The Cardinals selected him with the 10th pick and the linebacker played in Arizona for five years. He came off the bench as a rookie, but started nearly every game of his final four years outside of missing a few games with injuries in 95. He racked up 13.5 sacks and 367 total tackles during his time in Arizona. Miller then signed with the Browns in 99. Again, he started every game that he was healthy for during his first three years in Cleveland. In 2001, he had his best season ever, racking up 101 tackles and 13 sacks to make the Pro Bowl and All-Pro team for the first time. Unfortunately, in a 2002 preseason game, Miller ruptured his Achilles and never played another down. Since retiring, Miller has moved back to Arizona. He's done work as an investor and with the foundation he opened with his wife. Rodney Young, defensive back. Young's father, Willie, played college football at Grambling State and went on to play for a decade with the Giants despite going undrafted in 1965. The big offensive lineman started 119 games with the team in the 60s and 70s. With that pedigree, it's not a huge surprise that the younger Young became a star high school football player. The 6'2 defensive back stayed in state to play college football at LSU. He played for the Tigers for three years, grabbing six interceptions and one defensive touchdown. The Giants then selected him in the third round of the 95 draft. The big DB played in New York for four seasons, mostly on special teams and as a depth option as needed. In 98, he played in only two games and was out of the league after the season. After wrapping up his football career, Young moved back to Louisiana, where he was living a normal life as of 2020, when it was sadly announced that his dad, Willie, had passed away at 77. Basile Shabazz, defensive back. Shabazz was high school friends with Torrey Hunter and a great all-around athlete in his youth. He could dunk by the time he was 12 and set the Arkansas record in high jump, 200 meter dash, and long jump as a high school sophomore. Reportedly, he never even practiced the high jump before. He starred on the football field as a senior, but also talked the coach into letting him play basketball after the track season was over, letting him become an All-American in football, basketball, track and field, and baseball. He had several college offers, but was selected in the third round of the MLB draft by the St. Louis Cardinals. After learning he'd have to sit out a season due to Prop 48 rules if he played college football, Shabazz decided to stick with baseball and play in the minors. He flashed the skills needed to be a five-tool player, stealing 43 bases in 56 games in the 92 Rookie League. By 93, he had made a minor league all-star team and had worked his way up to double-A ball. However, in 94, he and Hunter were visiting a few friends at Central Arkansas when they were stopped by the police. The officers noticed a handgun under the seat and a small amount of marijuana. The two players were arrested and charged with misdemeanors of possession and Shabazz was charged with felony possession of a firearm on campus. Those charges were eventually dropped, but the Cardinals had already cut Shabazz. He did come back to the game with the Brewers, but eventually decided to head to college and play football at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. He sat out his first season due to Prop 48 rules before making it onto the field in 96 as a running back. However, he often butted heads with his head coach Lee Hardman over playing time. Things took a turn for the worse in October 96 when his brother Nasir was murdered in New Orleans, a murder that remains unsolved as of 2024. In 97, Shabazz moved to the defensive backfield in an October game in Baton Rouge. Shabazz sustained a major neck injury that caused him to temporarily lose feeling in his limbs. The injury ended his playing career and Shabazz eventually moved to Texas following his then girlfriend and now wife. He took several odd jobs over the years, but eventually started coaching Torrey Hunter's son. That led to him becoming a developmental coach in Dallas, where he was working as of 2024. Both of his daughters played college volleyball, and his son played football at Washita Baptist. Diolo Anderson, defensive back. Anderson played his college ball at Michigan, where he was roommates with NFL star Ty Law. For his part, Anderson played safety for the Wolverines, grabbing one career interception. Since wrapping up his career, Anderson has gotten married, 
and moved to the Atlanta area where he's been working in business. His daughter Camille played college basketball at NC State in Southern Mississippi. Derwin Jeffcoat, punter. Jeffcoat played college ball at South Carolina. In 92 and 93, he backed up previous All-USA winner Marty Simpson, but he took over in 94 as the team's main punter. Over his career, Jeffcoat averaged 38 yards per punt. He had almost quit the team in 92, but decided to stick on and use his scholarship to help him earn his degree. I'm not 100% sure it's him, but it does look like he stayed in South Carolina since earning his degree and was working as a paramedic as of 2020. Again, it could be a different guy, but the social media profiles I found seemed to match up. His son Bryce played quarterback at the D2 level. 